Welcome to my Game Theory 101 course. My name is Matt Rozu. I'm teaching Game Theory this semester on the Susquehanna University campus and dropping videos regularly for anybody else to follow along and learn a little bit about really one of my favorite subjects within economics. If you'd like more, please subscribe to this channel. You'll receive updates when new videos come out. Today we're talking about signaling and screening and the role game theory plays in determining whether you could have an effective signal or screening mechanism or not and also a little bit on what to think about when creating ways to screen or send a signal. Signaling and screening certainly is applicable to a number of areas, right? If you're in a relationship, you may do some screening to try to find the partner you may wish to find, or you may also try to send certain signals. Most of what we cover here is going to be in the context of an employer and an employee or a potential employee, but this really applies to a number of contexts. So we're going to start with an employer's dilemma. Suppose an employer knows there are two types of people who are in the job market. There's, um, and we'll just to simplify to say there's only two. There's a high skilled and a low skilled. Of course, the employer wants to hire the higher skilled worker and could pay wages commensurate with that person's ability, but doesn't know ahead of time whether the person they'd hire is really high skill or low skill for the type of work they're looking for. Naturally, both individuals may be claiming to be high skilled or both might even think they're high skilled, even if only one of them really has the particular skill set. What can the employer do to get a better idea of who they might be hiring and how to get the person they really wish to bring in into their firm? It's two things you could think of that could help the employer. And if you're watching this, given we already mentioned signaling and screening, well, yeah, you figured it out. Signaling and screening. Signaling is an act on behalf of the potential employee in this particular case to do some action that sends a signal of their abilities to the employer. Screening occurs when the employer takes some particular action to gain additional information on the abilities of the employees or basically who they're dealing with. And we're going to be talking a little bit about signaling and screening and how they can be effective. How do firms screen in general? And there are a lot of ways. Firms, a lot of firms do drug tests. So that's a very basic form of screening. A firm wants to know, is this somebody who is a drug user? And that's a way many firms will just simply screen those individuals out. Background investigations happen. Um, um, dean of a business school now. I have received many letters, especially from the federal government, doing background research on individuals, uh, especially if it's security type roles or the FBI. Many firms would have GPA requirements or degree requirements for particular jobs. That's a way of screening. There could be experience requirements. Some might look into criminal records. And one that I think is incredibly applicable, especially to college students, right? Well, GPA and degrees are as well, and quite a few of the other things. But social media posts, uh, there are many cases where individuals poor social media behavior has cost them opportunities. There's an example on the screen. I know it has happened at Susquehanna University to students in the past uh, who have made social media posts that have cost them opportunities when firms have screened. It is a big deal. Firms can check out what's available and it's a way that that screening can happen. We're going to go through a little problem now to examine how signaling could work. For screening, it's kind of exactly the opposite. You know, firm could create mechanisms to try to figure this out. But if we figure it out for signaling, you could figure it out for screening easy enough. So consider two potential employees, one high skilled, one low skilled. 
And you have an employer who's willing to pay $60,000 per year to a high-skilled employee and $30,000 a year to a low-skilled employee. What do you suppose both individuals would say? Well, both would say, well, I'm high-skilled. Uh, both might even believe it. Um, but if the employer can't distinguish, they've got a real problem here because they're willing to pay this higher amount. But how do they tell who is really a high skill employee and who is not? This is where signaling can come into play. I mentioned a number of ways to screen. Some of these relate to signals instead. So both could claim high skill. Signaling from the high skilled individual might be able to help the higher skilled individual convince the employer, hey, I'm higher skill, you should hire me. What would make a signal effective, however? I'm gonna take a step back. So in general, for a signal to be effective, one, it's gotta be interpreted as a signal. A good example from my background, uh, I played poker as a reasonably serious hobby. I love playing poker. I, I can make a pretty good argument that skills in poker translate to skills in many other fields. Some places do indeed recognize that as a signal, but some wouldn't. You have to be careful that what you're doing for your signal is easily interpreted as a signal. In general, the signal needs to be costly for both the high-skilled and the low-skilled employees to obtain, but it needs to be less costly for the higher-skilled employees to obtain. This last point's really important. A signal has to be cheap enough for the higher-skilled employees to obtain where it's worth them doing it, and expensive enough for the lower-skilled employees where it's not worth doing. Right, if a lower skilled employee could just send the same signal, the signal's gonna break down, it won't work. You need something that somebody with high skills can pull off, somebody with low skills cannot. Let's go through a problem. So suppose courses in a college could serve as a signal. If it costs $2,000 in energy, time, effort, money perhaps, to take a class for a higher skilled worker in this particular field, and $17,000 in time and energy for the lower skilled worker in the particular field is an effective signal possible. I would recommend, especially if you're taking the class from me right now and watching this video, pause it, try to come up with the answer, but I'll go through this then in just a moment. The answer is yes, a signal here is possible. The question, of course, is what is the minimum number of courses that a high-skilled individual needs to take in order to properly indicate they are higher skilled without wasting effort or energy? And in this case, there's a $30,000 difference in salaries. So a lower skilled worker would find it valuable to take one class if one class served as a signal because it's $17,000 worth of cost to get $30,000 in extra salary. So one class won't cut it as a signal, but two classes would, because two classes would cost $34,000 in time, effort, money, energy. $34,000 won't be worth it for the lower skilled individual in this particular field, but for the higher skilled individual in this particular field, $2,000 times two is $4,000. Uh, really good deal to spend $4,000 to get an extra $30,000. So an effective signal here is indeed possible and it would involve the higher skilled individual taking two specific classes in this field. This is an example of a separating equilibrium. That is an equilibrium where the signaling mechanism properly can sort between different types of workers or different you know, people in different groups. That when there is a screen, if you want somebody who doesn't take drugs, right, the drug test is a pretty good screen. Um, any sort of signal or screen where you can properly sort leads to a separating equilibrium. A pooling equilibrium is a case where the effective signal is not possible. Perhaps, you know, the time and effort to obtain the particular signal it's about the same for those in different groups. 
Well, then a, an effective equilibrium that sorts between the two is impossible, and that would be considered a pooling equilibrium. There's no signal or screen that's effective. Let's go back to the drug test. Suppose there's some really quick over-the-counter something you could take that would mask the results if somebody was doing drugs. Well, then that's, that's pretty cheap for somebody to get a hold of. You might run into a pooling equilibrium problem. Signaling, screening, incredibly powerful. We're just scratching the surface here, right? But this is an undergraduate game theory class. Powerful tools when used right. Game theory really plays a hand in thinking through what are appropriate mechanisms. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on signaling and screening. Once again, this is part of my game theory course. More videos will be coming, so if you liked it, please uh, Subscribe to the channel, it does help me out as well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.